founding partners. He and John D. Rockefeller started that company together back in 1870. Now, Mr. Flagler had made millions and millions of dollars from, Flagler, uh, from Standard Oil. He had to do all the legal work. And Rockefeller, as I told you, Flagler never went past the eighth grade, but he had a natural ability for business and to make laws for business and all of that. It's just amazing. So that's where it all started. Originally, they started making their money in Standard Oil by uh, refining the oil into kerosene because we did not have electricity yet. So that was, if you wanted to have lights in your house, you had to have oil and you had to have, you know, oil lamps and things like that. The street lights in the cities had to be uh, also powered by kerosene. So, anyway, any questions? Over here to the left of this arched window, it's hard to see, I know, with the glare. Oh, yeah. But that small portrait there to the left, that's his first wife, Mary. That's the very sickly one I told you about. She passed away at the age of 47. They were married for 28 years. That's the only wife he had children with. They had two daughters and a son together. Their daughter, Carrie, died at the age of two and a half. We don't have a, there's, I think, a photo of her up in the history room, but not her. And then his other daughter, Jenny Louise, that's the large portrait, she died at 34 from complications of childbirth. And her baby also passed. Mm -hmm. So he's way to make, now she looks a lot older in this portrait. When you see her photo upstairs in, in the history room, you'll see how much younger than she did look. Uh, but she had never been married before. That was her first marriage at 34. And she came from a wealthy family up in North Carolina. Uh, anybody here from there? Uh, Chapel Hill area. There's a Keenan's Hill up there, that's her family. There's Keenan Stadium up in uh, Chapel Hill. And there's also uh, the Flagler Keenan Business College on the University of North Carolina campus at Chapel Hill. So that was her family. Now, if you'll, if you'll notice the pearls around her neck, that is a five foot strand perfectly matched natural pearls with a 12 pair diamond clasp on the back. And Mr. Flagler gave those to her when he proposed marriage to her in 1901. They were designed by Tiffany's up in New York. And at that time, Tiffany's had never done a piece of jewelry that expensive. That was a $1 million necklace back then. It had nothing to do with the diamond. It had to do with the, the, the pearls. They had to match them up. They were not cultured, they were natural. <coughs> so the workmanship that it took to match those pearls up it was just really intense, so that's why it was so expensive. Now, so this is the second largest room in the house. This room is 3,400 square feet. This is where all the parties and social gatherings took place. Mary Lilly was a young woman. She loved getting dressed up and having parties in this room. And I forgot to tell you, they only came here for three months out of the whole year. They didn't live here. They had another home in St. Augustine, and they had another home in Mamaroneck, New York. But they basically, basically, they would come the day after Christmas by private rail car from St. Augustine. They liked to spend Christmas up there. And then they would stay here till about the end of February, beginning of March. Then they would get packed up and head back up to St. Augustine. Now, Mary Lilly would stay up in St. Augustine, but Henry, Henry Flagler was constantly meeting with the engineers that were building the Overseas Railroad. So he was constantly making trips back and forth. So he was... Uh, here, he was down in Miami a lot, back and forth, back and forth. So anyway, um, this is where all the parties took place. This pink carpeting uh, usually is not down, but at this time of year, we have our lecture series going on. So this is where our lectures take place. So to protect the original Oak Parquet below here, they put this pink carpeting down. This will come back, this will come out at about the end of March, at the end of our lecture series. And then the Oak Parquet will be showing again. Now, the, anybody been to the Palace of Versailles in France? That is what kind of what the architects kind of model this room after. Now, Henry Flagler completely relied on the interior designers and architects because he had never been out of the United States. He never left this country, never traveled. And so they are the ones that kind of put this room together. They put these mirrors in here across from each other to help reflect the light in here at night and give this room a dazzling appearance for these big parties and social gatherings. Mm -hmm. All the lighting is original. We're back to the Baccarat <coughs> crystal chandeliers again. Do you notice the grapes hanging from the bottom of these chandeliers? That symbolically was meant to represent wine and merrymaking, because oh, this was a party room. Yeah. So that, yeah, there's a lot of symbolic things attached to a lot of things. And then the sconces made out of crystal and bronze, they're all original to 1902. So the lighting that you're seeing is pretty much how the house would have been lit back in those days. Mm -hmm. Now, she even had a full orchestra come in here and play music for these parties. They would be back in that balcony area. That piece right back there, that thing opens up, it opens out, 
and it's like forms an alcove kind of a thing, and the, the orchestra oh. would have been up in that thing, in that alcove back in there. Now, over here to my left, on, on the stencil, there's an actual black and white photograph that was taken in this room in 1903. 1909, she took over in 1960. She opened the house up to the public as a museum. D3, she had the hotel taken down. So everything above our heads is gone. This is all she left behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get a lot of use out of this room. As I say, we, had, we just had a wedding here Saturday. Actually, the wedding on Saturday, they used this space and the pavilion. They rented both. So they started out here and then ended up out there. So you can, you can do both if you want to. Uh, so it does get a lot of use. We have our, um, our concert series that goes on, too, that's going to be starting, I think, in February or January. And the concert, like chamber music, it all takes place back here. So, any questions? Yes. yes. <coughs> um, the hurricane of 1935, did it pass through this area and was this edifice damaged in any way? It did pass through here. It completely destroyed the hotel. The Royal Point Santa Hotel was still there in 1935. And it just destroyed it so badly they took the whole thing down. This house did okay. It had a little bit of roof damage and some uh, window damage, but no, because the, this house is all steel beam construction with concrete over it. So this house is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. <coughs> but the Royal Point Santa Hotel next door, next door was made out of wood. So it didn't do well. <laughs> There's, this is the dining room. I meant to tell you all this one. This is kind of interesting. When the house was ready to be made possibly torn down back in 1959, the men, what they did that owned it back in those days, they emptied the house out before Gene Flagler Matthews bought it in 59 because they were thinking that they wanted to tear it down, but they didn't want to tear it down with all this furniture in it. So family, Flagler family, Keenan family came in and took what they wanted out. The rest was auctioned off. So when Jean Flagler Matthews took over in 59, well, she wanted to get all these pieces back. She wanted the house to look like it did back in her grandfather's day. So after all these years, it's taken all these years to get everything back, but we have everything back 100% now. Wow. Wow. And I, I, what reminded me of it was the dining room table and chairs. This was the last piece to come back. This just came back about three, four years ago. Um, the table was bought in the, in the late 50s by an insurance company up in Chicago, and they used this table to have their boardroom meetings around for years and years and years. So when the CEO retired of that company, they always told us that it would be, get, get sent back. They knew it came from here, mm -hmm. so it would get sent back, and it did. It had to be restored. All these pieces had to be restored. The chairs were found separate from the table, so the new ta the tapestry had to be put on the chairs, and then these sideboards next to it, those were in a separate place. Mm -hmm. So they tracked all these pieces down and then brought it all back together. Wow, and um, the wood that this is, is something called satin wood, which I really don't know a lot about, but apparently it's a southern wood, you can't really get it any longer. And they liked it because of the light color of it, it had a honey kind of color to it. Mm -hmm. So they really liked the color of it, so anyway. Uh, this room, it's done in what's called French Renaissance style. So again, Renaissance tells you that it has a dark masculine feel to it. The architects wanted you to feel as if you were dining in a royal hunting lodge in England, <laughs> which I, I kind of get that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now when the Flaglers were here by themselves, they would have their meals in that breakfast room over there. When you first came into your left, there's a little mm -hmm. breakfast room over there. This was mainly for big formal dinners and maybe a huge family dining experience kind of a thing. Now, unfortunately, when the hotel people came in and took over in 1925 to make room for their hotel in the back, they had to chop off the kitchen because the kitchen kind of jutted out behind the house with the servant's dining room on it. So they chopped that off. And on the other side, where our store is, that was Henry Flagler's private office. So they just chopped them both off and put the big hotel up so we have no kitchen left to go through anymore. It's long gone. Now the ceiling in here is all plaster. Again, everything below ceiling level is wood. This is all wood paneling. This is all mahogany in here. And up at the, uh, there's a fireplace mantle that goes all the way up to the top, to the ceiling there. And up at the very top, there's a, it's hard to see with the glare, but there's actually carved into the wood at the very top an F for Flagler's last initial. Hmm. And some of you at eye level, if you look straight in front of you at that uh, mantle, you'll see blue crabs. And you'll see, uh, you'll see fruit and shells and all kinds of things pertaining to food. So it's um, funny that they did that because this was a place of dining. So.
Now, because of no air conditioning for so many years, the rugs did not survive, most of them, but for some reason, this rug survived. It is original to this room. It was specifically built for this room. It was built, it was meant to be built right into the center of the floor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it's made out of wool. It's done in a room. It's called the um, the drawing room. On into another room. So you, they would, when they had these big formal parties here, big dinners, the men and women would come out here, they would start here, and then the men would head off, they would separate for about 45 minutes or so. The men would head off to the billiard room or the library with Henry Flagler. And uh, Mary, uh, the, the third wife, uh, Mary Lilly, she would stay in here and she would entertain the ladies after dinner. So she had, the big inf she had a big influence on the decoration of this room. This is actually Louis XVI style, very French. The women of the time period loved French design. So she would sit at that, that Steinway piano was made to her specifications. She had it built specifically for her. As I told you, she was a very accomplished pianist, so she would sit there and play music for these ladies as they were milling around with their coffee or tea. And then in about 45 minutes, the men would head back in here, they would say their goodbyes here, and they would be uh, taken out through the front, or the double doors out front. Now the interesting thing about this room is the molding that's in this room. It looks very uh, goldish now, but you see all that fancy, scrolly molding up there, mm -hmm. well, in gold. Oh, wow. It was extremely, extremely expensive. They even made jewelry out of aluminum because of the expense of it. So because of the expense, he only used it in this room, and this is the only room where the thermostats are also made out of aluminum. There's one right here, and there's one over there. You see it there behind that little wall right there? That yeah. And that's made out of aluminum. And also this, these lights that you see in all four corners, these are called torchieres. Those are also made out of aluminum to match the room. <clears throat> now I told you the women were very fascinated with Marie Antoinette. So Mary Lilly wanted her cameo put in this room. So Marie Antoinette's cameo is in here three separate times. It's above the fireplace mantle and above each doorway. That is supposed to be a side view of Marie Antoinette up there. So. And before we leave here, I wanted to just point out the sh these, these lamps. Now they brought the lamps forward um, so you can see, get a better look at the lampshades. The lampshades are not original to 1902, uh, 1902, but they're inspired by the original lampshades. They are there because the people from that time period were not used to electricity. The electric light bulb to them was a very harsh light. When they were growing up, they had candlelight and oil lamps, which is a very soft, flickering light. Mm -hmm. Well, out came this electric light bulb. There was no way to diffuse it or anything because dimmer switches had not been invented yet. <laughs> So you couldn't turn the light down like we can today. So they would put these heavy ornate lampshades on top of the light bulb oh, to help diffuse and soften the light. And Mary that's Lilly it. figured out if you use pastel colors on the shades, when the light shines through, it reflected on the ladies' complexions yeah. and gave them a rosy peachy glow to their skin. Cool. Uh -huh. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah.